Hey everybody, Brooks from Drag Times here. Uh, this video is going to be about autopilot. I've been getting a lot of questions lately from actually the press and friends and family uh, about all the recent autopilot stuff in the news. Uh, there's a couple crashes that involved uh, different cars uh, using autopilot and not using autopilot. And um, after putting about 9,000 miles on this car, a lot of it using autopilot on the highway and different situations. I just want to go over, you know, what I feel like are situations that I prefer using autopilot and don't. Uh, don't take these recommendations that I use uh, for anyone, anyone's own personal reasons. I just want to go over when I use autopilot, when I don't use autopilot, in a real world situation down into a commute into Miami, Florida. I'll show different situations from bumper to bumper traffic, highway, city driving, and uh, you'll see on the display exactly what happens, what all the pilot thinks is happening, and I'll explain along the way of what's going on. All right, so before we start the drive, I just wanna go over the interface for autopilot. Uh, below 18 miles an hour or in bumper to bumper traffic, uh, autopilot just tracks the car in front of you, and when it's doing that, the car in front of you is blue. And this indicates it's tracking the car in front of you, so just follow it. It is ignoring or not using the lane markers, uh, which is the gray area on each side of the red car. So the second thing you want to talk about is the lane markers. Uh, and in this picture here, I'm showing with the red arrows, uh, the lane markers. So in this case, autopilot's off and the lane markers are black, which means the car can detect both lanes. Uh, which will allow autopilot to use those lanes uh, when going over 18 miles an hour. All right, so the next shot here shows autopilot on, and that's indicated by the two top arrows. Uh, the left shows the speed of the cruise control, and the right shows a steering wheel. It's a little blurry, but uh, that's in blue, and that means autopilot's on. And if you look down, you'll see that we're going uh, 39 miles an hour, and the bottom arrows are pointing to those lane markers and those are lighted up in blue. So that means autopilot is using the lane markers to uh, determine the direction of the vehicle and not the car in front of you, although it is tracking it as well. All right, so one of the definitely do not do's for autopilot is to use it uh, on a street that is uh, non-divided. So no median in the middle, just uh, one lane back and forth. Um, an example would be on this road right here. Uh, we'll turn it on. I got my hands on the wheel paying very close attention. <clears throat> but the margin for error is just too much. Um, you know, cars coming the other way, very close. Um, if the lane markers are not clear or the car in front of you veers either way, it's just too close for comfort. I mean, you got this car coming real close right here. It's just not worth it. It's not a good situation for autopilot. Uh, just don't do it at all. Next up, we got a divided uh, street here, not a highway. Uh, we have autopilot on. Uh, keep in mind, it does not read um, traffic lights. So if that light is red right here, the car will not stop. It'll just blow right by it. Also, if you notice right here, the lines do not continue through an intersection. So. Uh, autopilot will lose the lines in there and if you saw a little bit right there between that intersection the car kind of veered off to the right um, again autopilot not great for uh, just regular city driving it's best for the highway um, especially when you're coming through traffic lights and the lane markers aren't there the car can sometimes just uh, not sure exactly what to do All right, so here we are behind a big rig truck, and uh, as you can see on the display there, it uh, the autopilot actually identifies different types of vehicles on the road. Um, so it's got a big box truck type in front of here. Uh, it also identifies regular cars and motorcycles, which uh, if you come across any motorcycles on the drive today, we'll, we, we will um, show you how they show up there. Okay, so here we are on the highway. I'm gonna go ahead and engage autopilot, and we're at about 75 miles an hour. And uh, this is a good example for autopilot. I mean, we're on the highway, cruising along, um, and it's just an easy situation for autopilot to be in. Um, if you look at the display there, you can see it sees cars around us, identifies this truck uh, we're coming up on here, uh, and also the car in front of us. Um, I'm just resting my hand on the steering wheel. The Tesla can actually detect your hand on the steering wheel. 
and if you don't have it on there and uh, the lines on the road are questionable or it's not sure what's going on it'll warn you repeatedly to take control of the car or put your hands on the steering wheel it tends to do that more on sweeping corners on the highway um, where it will check to see if your hands on the wheel um, not so much on uh, just straight roads All right, so next up I'd like to talk about is construction zones. So we're still on autopilot in the highway. As you can see here in this little screen, I got a tailgater behind me. I don't know what her problem is. I mean, really? It's so ridiculous. Anyways, um, so we're coming up on a pretty heavy construction zone here. Um, I don't recommend auto autopilot in these kind of situations just because there could be old lane markings from previous roads that were being redirected. So up here, you know, the traffic pattern has changed over the past couple months. Um, and it's just, you know, if, if you think it's complicated for driving um, or a new situation, then autopilot is probably not a good idea. So here we come up on a bunch of cranes and the lane markers are changing and the, the car needs to go kind of left and right um, in some more rapid fashion here. So, you know, I have my, I'm still in autopilot, but I have my hand on the wheel. Um, I drive this road almost every day, so I understand what's coming up. But again, you know, with the different lane markings that can change, cars moving back and forth I just you know it's not a good idea just to have autopilot on you can see the lines in the road right there veering off to the right um, the car could get confused and follow some other lane markings and um, cause a problem for you so again construction zones new markings old markings uh, definitely do not recommend using autopilot for that Another situation to be careful with autopilot is uh, exits on the highway. As you can see here, we're coming up on an exit. Um, Tesla's actually made some big improvements with this situation, but at the beginning, uh, the car would sometimes try and take the exit. Um, like right here, example, it kind of thought about it, moved back and forth a little bit, but did not take the exit. So there's been big improvements with that, but just if you're in the right lane on a highway and there's an exit coming up, just be really careful and uh, aware of what's going on to make sure the car does not take the exit. This is another situation to be careful with. You got a wall on the left side there, if you notice that. Um, again, the, the, the autopilot's reading lane markings, and that wall was really close to that yellow lane. It's coming up again right here. Um, again, this is a construction zone, so I wouldn't recommend using autopilot here, anyways. But as you can see, the wall here on the left is just a little too close for comfort for me and um, really close to that yellow line, not comfortable. I would not use autopilot. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off right now by tapping the brake. <clears throat> so yeah, walls on the left, close to the line, construction zones, don't use it. So another question I get all the time uh, is about, you know, if the car will take an exit or not using the autopilot um, it will not even if you have the route programmed into your GPS and the GPS the navigation system the car knows that you're supposed to take an exit the autopilot will not abide by that yet I mean maybe that's something that's coming in the future I imagine it would be but as of right now if the car thinks you're supposed to take if the navigation system says you're supposed to take it off take an exit uh, the car will not uh, so you just have to be aware of that all right, so here we are on a city street situation again. Um, autopilot will actually limit the mile an hour. You can go to, I think, five mile an hour over the posted speed limit uh, for safety reasons. But again, don't really recommend autopilot for this kind of situation. Here's a red light. And again, it would blow right through there, so I'm gonna have to stop, take over. So that's why you gotta really be careful. So another situation you got to be aware of excessive glare on the road um, it's not so bad right now but sometimes on this commute in the morning the sun is really bright shining on the road you might have a little moisture here from the rain and it could just cause reflections on the street and lane markings to not appear so like right now I really can't see the lane markings and if you could see autopilot can't either if you look at the display it sees one lane on the right and nothing on the left and it kind of is blinking back and forth you got to be aware because that basically means autopilots is not is not sure where the lane markers are either uh, so here we have moisture on the road glare from the sun coming directly for towards us and those blue lines on the display here are indicating what autopilot sees whether it can see the lane markers or not and 
you can see those lines kind of blinking from gray to blue and that's determining if it can see the road or not uh, because I have my hand on the steering wheel it could detect that it's not alerting me alerting me right away but if I didn't have my hand on the steering wheel the car would come up immediately asking me to take over so right now it's losing it back and forth you can see it in the display here and it also goes blue to track in the car in front of me even though we're over 18 miles an hour which normally it always tracks uh, 18 or under and over it's using lane markers all right so here we are um, in Miami traffic it's actually not that bad this morning but I wanted to show here a situation that autopilot doesn't really like and I recommend not using it um, in the left lane where you have these express lanes with these plastic poles on the left here um, although there are definitely lane markers on the left and right uh, the system just doesn't like the poles next to the line so close so and actually in this case because the road is wet and there's a lot of reflections coming up uh, the car is actually having trouble reading the right line as well so if you notice on the display uh, with the car there there are no lines on either side which basically means you know it's not identifying the lane markers um, so I'm gonna go ahead and engage autopilot keep my hand on the wheel it's actually tracking the car way up there instead of using the lane markers which I'm just not comfortable with um, if I didn't have my hand on the wheel it would come up immediately asking me to take over um, and it's just getting too close to these poles on the left and it makes me just not not comfortable so what I recommend in a situation where you have the poles on the left is just to move over one lane um, and the car will drive perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and engage it again now that you can see the line markers. You can see right here, uh, Autopilot sees both lanes right now with both lines, but the left line is coming on and off. So right now the blue line on the right is on, but not on the left, which means it can't see that left side, which basically means it's hugging the right lane and giving it some space but at times it's just too close to the poles uh, which makes me uncomfortable so I just don't use autopilot the left lane with these plastic express lane poles I move over a lane and use it over there start rolling into some traffic here uh, autopilot's actually really great for bumper to bumper traffic um, on the highway especially um, usually people are trying to jockey in and out for position um, but still you got to be careful keep your hands on the wheel and make sure that you're ready because a lot of times people try and cut you off and you just have to be aware autopilot doesn't respond great when someone's trying to cut you off quickly we should note is that you can control the distance that you are comfortable with between the car in front of you and the car using the cruise control stock or the autopilot stock you just turn it up and down and it'll change the settings. I typically leave it on one so people aren't cutting you off at least the least amount of distance between this car and the car in front of us. But if I crank it up to three or four or five or six, the car will drop back and leave more space uh, between us and the car in front of us. Typically on the highway, it's not so much needed to adjust that, but for bumper to bumper traffic, it definitely helps to have a shorter distance so that people aren't trying to cut you off. I'm gonna bring it back down to one. All right, so there we go. Those are my personal do's and don'ts for autopilot in the Tesla. Keep in mind, Tesla states that autopilot is a beta. As long as you understand that, understand how autopilot works and the situations that it works well in, uh, autopilot just works really well. Uh, one more don't for autopilot is don't play that Pokemon Go game while using autopilot. Uh, just to see if anyone's still watching. The first three people to email me no Pokemon Go to info at dragtimes.com. I'll send out a free dragtimes.com t-shirt. Thanks for watching. Like and comment below. Let me know what you think about Tesla's autopilot features, how it works now, how you think it's going to work in the future, and in general, the future of autonomous cars.